Yo, what's good? It's King Salu back with another video, you feel me? As you can see, this is a slightly different setup. If you wanna talk about this camera quality real quick, I know it look good, it looks amazing. Don't get used to it. I left my camera at home and this is why I'm filming on my boy's camera, so appreciate him, I'll throw a little. <laughs> this is obviously the part two video, if you can tell by the title, to modeling tips and advice. First video was me speaking about how I got into modeling and I think you guys really back with it for real. Like we about to touch 700 uh, subscribers now and it got like 600 plus views. So I appreciate you guys so much. So today we're gonna be speaking on how... <laughs> so today we're gonna be talking about how you as an individual can get into modeling if that's what you wanna do. Before we start though, I would say that it's not for everybody and it's harder than you think. That's just gonna be like the beginning vibe. So I'm not saying you shouldn't do it. I'm not saying, I'm not trying to discourage you or anything, but just know it's not just a regular process. But please be on a like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Let's hit 700. We're on the road to a thousand, you feel me? I gotta stop saying, you feel me? When it comes to modeling, there's like a bunch of different avenues multiple people can go through. If you see my last video, the first um, installment of this little mini series, um, obviously I went down like a little different route. I went through one runway, then to e-com, and then to more lifestyle. But Everybody has their own way, in my opinion. You can start with runway. I know people that went into runway and obviously branched out into much bigger things like acting or even like modeling for, you know, big companies and stuff. And there's people that can go the agency route. If you're valid, there's some agencies that will pick you up straight out, like with no experience, and you can go into modeling like that. Or you can be a freelance model and be taking pictures with uh, friends or local photographers or people that just want to take pictures with you and obviously get some content like that. So it all depends on what's cool with you and what you're down to do, honestly, or what opportunities come to your way. What you can do though is take initiative. Like that's one of the biggest things when it comes to modeling. It's not something that you just wait around and like be like, oh, you know, I really want to do it, but didn't really get the chance to. It's something that you could easily hit a photographer, be like, hey, let's just set up, uh, uh, invest in yourself. You can pay a cool little, you're from a cool little penny just to see how if you like it and how the pictures come out and that could be like your start. There's also always castings being posted all around the world or all around social media that you can easily put yourself into. When it comes to castings though, a lot of them may either need you to come in person or you might need digitals to send it to them. Digitals are like a set of photos that show you as a person, your figure and how you look. And that's what, I'll show some examples right here. I don't even have digitals. Wow. It's honestly something that's great for when you're trying to get into the whole modeling scene. If you have digitals, you can send those out to different agencies, which will obviously take a look at them and see if you're valid. If you are, they'll take you and get picked up. It's, you know, it's kind of valid. So when it comes to castings, there's obviously a bunch of different types. There's be some for runway. There could be some for just uh, brand, brands in general. Brands will have castings just to see if they, if you could fit their, um, you know, look, I should say because every brand or every person has their own look that they're looking for. And if you fit the mold, I should say, if you fit the aesthetic that they're looking for, you could obviously get a job with them because you know, you fit the, you fit the thing, yeah. <laughs> so when it comes to runway castings, these are ones that you would have to go in and obviously walk for like some panel or some type of people that are hosting the casting. This could be done in like a bunch of different places. I know personally, I've been to ones in Atlantic City, some in New York, there's uh, been some in Philly. Those are like some, not Atlantic City, but those are some main places that you'll see castings being done, uh, especially like LA and stuff too. Obviously you get there, you um, sign up or whatever, and it was, it's literally just you walking, model walk, doing your thing, and you, you do it probably like once or twice and you get picked off of that. This is also another reason why I kind of don't like runway walks because like one, the anxiety's there, two, People are just like judging you off of a walk, which is like, ugh, you feel me? Like you're pretty much a human mannequin. That's just my opinion though. If you do feel like you can go that route, uh, your model walk is something that is really important. Like really important. You cannot go out there. You will embarrass yourself if you over here like stumbling, you can't walk in heels, for, especially for girls. For guys, it's definitely something that you should work on and practice in the mirror. I definitely did that when I first started out. So if you want to get into runway, please practice. Go on um, YouTube type in runway walk by men. I promise you, take some tips, take the time to actually um, work on it and you should go far, I'm not gonna lie. Model walks is really important, especially for the girls though. Heels, walking in heels is something very important. Knowing 
how to look and what uh, type of show you're going for. Like there's swim, uh, swim runway, there's high fashion, there's streetwear. So there's a bunch of different things you can go into. Just actually taking the initiative to go look and find out the castings that are being put out there is your job. Like that's something that you can do. People aren't gonna wait around for you, you know? You can't wait around for opportunities either, so. When it comes to e-com, like getting into modeling, like with uh, e-commerce, I don't know if you've seen the last video, but I explained that e-commerce shoots are mainly things that you'll see on uh, websites for companies. It'll be more like white background, you and their product, and you're gonna be on their website most likely, just with the you know product on. Sometimes they'll show your face, sometimes they won't. Getting into that is a little bit more harder because it really comes down to your look and what people are looking for. So me personally, when I got into econ modeling, this big guy, you feel me? Big dude. <laughs> he literally just DM'd me off Instagram. Said, yo, you'd be cool with ah, ah, just doing this. And that's how I got into it. So people reached out to me instead of, you know, getting that chance like in runway, like going to look for castings and stuff. It's not common for people to really like do castings for econ or be like doing, I don't know, open calls type thing. Like it's it's something that they'll really look out for you for. And uh, if you get the chance to, that'd be really valid. So it's one of those things that I explained in the last video, quality content being pushed out consistently, you're gonna be seen by someone. You never know who's on the other side of the phone. So just make sure like you're doing that and you can get chances to, you know, model for someone. Also though, you can take the initiative, like I said earlier, to actually hit up certain brands. You know, there's some local brands or you can find out the people that work for the companies like uh, social media managers that you could hit up and see if you can get a chance to model for them as well. That's what I personally did when it came to Spencer's. I hit up the social media manager for Spencer's and you know, Spencer's a pretty big brand, you know, on IG, they got a hell of followers, all that. Um, I hit her up and I was like, hey, by any chance would you need a model for, uh, you know, Spencer's? Cause that's what she posts on her Instagram. And that led me to be able to work with them, not Ecom, but still it's lifestyle and by me taking the initiative to actually reach out to a brand I was able to work with them and get paid for it, you know, so it's always taking the initiative and You know putting out content to like so people can be drawn to your page more like people aren't gonna be Drawn to your page if you won zero posts like come on bad bad content um, If they see that you're obviously not putting in any effort or if they see that your look is just not for them they're not gonna go to you. You're easily gonna be pushed aside with everyone else. And lastly, we're going into freelance. Freelance is obviously, in my opinion, the much like the better route. Uh, I'd say like, because you have more control over what you do and it's more, um, it's more fun, in my opinion. Like you're working for yourself, so. But freelance, and I can drag it in from the last videos and everything I've been saying before. Quality content being pushed out consistently and working with people that's around you so you can get content, you know, pretty frequent. That's like one of the biggest things it's, it's a, you have to take initiative when it comes to freelance. You're not gonna be able to go and do a shoot if you don't have the vibe for it, if you don't want to do it. If, I mean, you have to put bread into this sometimes. Like at some point I had to start paying my friend that's helping me take my pictures because, you know, everybody gotta eat at one point. And I was down for it because she's been helping me from the jump. She helped start me. So I'll throw her whatever bread she need but you cannot be reluctant to pay people. Now, if it's outrageous prices, don't get me wrong, don't do it. Cause like, why would you waste your money when you could probably find someone way cheaper and more willing to work with you? But going out and taking the pictures, even if you can take your pictures yourself is something that's valid, but that's a whole different uh, realm that uh, a lot of people can't really get into. Like I said, taking those pictures, putting them out constantly, making Instagram, you can make Instagram your little online portfolio by doing that alone. And that is what draws people to your page because you're gaining reach off of just, oh, his content's fire, let me follow him. Oh, his content's fire, maybe he could work for my brand. That's what freelance modeling really goes into. Another thing that comes with freelance modeling is definitely getting into trends on Instagram or even other social media platforms. Platforms. I'm not gonna st talk too much about this though, because you know that's more for the next video, the last installment. If you're a freelance model, obviously trying to get yourself out there, Hopping on certain trends that are popping at the moment can really do that for you. I had a little video that kind of went viral on Instagram about all the pictures that I took during 2021. And that was all of like the, the work that I've done, all the consistent quality content that was put out by me. And I just put it on a little set and put it on reels. Kind of blew up and I got a lot of exposure from that. So 
like I said, it's not something that is just gonna wait around for you. You have to go take the initiative and do it. Like, and you never know what the result's gonna be, but as long as you put that effort in, I promise you're not gonna see bad results. Yeah, that's, that's all that matters. As long as you're putting that effort in and putting that first step forward, you could easily get into this modeling scene. Above all though, when it comes to modeling, like I promise you, it's a big confidence thing. Like, it doesn't matter your build, your mitt. Mitt means face, for those who don't know. Um, any of that. Like, if you don't have the confidence when it comes into modeling, you will easily get chewed up and spit out the industry, like with no problem. Because one, people don't have time to waste on people that don't feel good behind, um, in front of a camera. Two, if you don't have confidence in yourself, who's gonna have confidence in you? It's really a mental thing when it comes to it. Cause I'll tell you my first time when I uh, did my first casting for a runway, uh, I was shaking in my boots, not even gonna lie. Like I was dead shaking. I walked, got to the end of the runway, tried to smile and my lip was shaking, like so serious. But after I did my first show, not even my first show, my first walk in a show, all nerves was gone. And that confidence like stayed in me. Like I was like, okay, this is it. This is what I chose to do. This is the decision I made and I'm gonna stick to it. I'm gonna get this modeling thing down. And when I do, it's clips. You know, it's kind of worked out. But like I said, confidence in yourself is a big thing. And also being ready for all the adversities that's thrown at you. Especially when it comes to being a female model, it is really hard because there's a lot of people that are body shamers and there's a lot of people that aren't really who they say they are when it comes to like photographers and agencies and stuff. So it's really staying grounded in yourself and making sure you watch out for those who aren't in your best interest. When it comes to being a male model, not even just a male model, just being a model in general, be careful of who you shoot with, who you uh, stay in contact with. Cause you know, like I said earlier, everyone's not in your best interest. You never know what people could be on. So building relationships is a big thing. Making sure that you're not messing with some weirdos is, is a big thing. Me personally, I had a couple run-ins with um, bad agencies. One, they've been working with people that they've been keeping in contracts with and um, not letting them leave. That's a big one that I uh, fell into. Luckily, I was able to get out of that. Two, have agencies bring you up to their offices, waste your time and money and gas just to receive no contact or any you know positive feedback from that. Three, agencies that are ready to lock you in to a long-term deal, even though you're just starting. When it comes to agencies, just be careful. Just know what's in your heart. And like, if you feel like it's off, it probably is off. So don't just jump into things head first. Honestly, I think I covered a good amount of bases. If you feel like you have any more questions though, please comment below. I'll really be down to answer and sit down um, to talk to you guys. Hopefully you guys actually um, got some good feedback or good like words or advice from this video. Uh, I hope it helped for real, for real, because I know there's a lot of people out there that want to, wants to get into this field, but really don't know how. And uh, I just want to make this video help you guys out, honestly. So please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Uh, if you want to see more content, do everything I just said, please. And uh, follow me on the gram, at King.Asalu, TikTok, Twitter, all that. And uh, I'm going to catch you guys.